I said to everybody, can you think of one thing you've done in your life that if somebody told you you would do it years before, you would have said, I would never do that. And you find yourself doing the very thing that you were adamant you would not do. Because it was in there, just waiting for an opportunity to, like alien out the belly. So we actively repent because we really don't know the depths of what we would do given the opportunity. Papa says it like this, there are some sins you can't commit till you've got money. There are just some things you can't do unless you have access to wealth. And he said that's why some of us, God will keep us in a place where we can't have access to that kind of wealth because knows, God knows we'll lose our head. <laughs> so sometimes we're praying for things and God is saying, just like you'd say to a child, I can't give you the car keys. Doesn't matter how much you scream. You can ask me every day and say you want to drive mommy's car, daddy's car. We know as the parent will say, I can't give you that because you can't handle that. So I want us to read a scripture because I want us to recognize that God is giving us access to better. Psalms 51. This has been the anthem of my life for the last few months. Because life has a way of trying to block up your pores. You know, you get congested. You can get indigestion, can't quite shift everything out of the system, and that can happen to us spiritually. But Psalms 51 verse 10 says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Let's stop there one second. You see this heart of ours? Sometimes it's not that God just has to cleanse it. Sometimes I say, we have to start again with this heart. I have to give you a brand new, transformed nature in your heart so it affects your emotions and it affects your feelings and then he said renew a steadfast spirit within me so God wants to deal with our emotional state our feelings our hearts that carry memories pain joy hopes dreams where he is supposed to sit on the inside and then he said but you also need the right kind of spirit because if our spirit isn't strong we're not going to be able to withstand what is coming against us in these coming days. It's not enough just to have a clean heart and be nice and be kind and be gentle and operate in the fruit of the spirit. You need to have a steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, strong spirit. Then he says, this is David speaking, and don't cast me from your presence. So what's David saying? Sometimes my emotions will betray you. Sometimes my heart deceives me. Sometimes my spirit feels weak. But if you at least keep me always connected to you in your presence. So that's three things David has said. And then he says, and do not take your spirit from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So we need to have a regular checkup on our hearts. We need to have a regular upgrade in our spirit. We need to actively enter into worship to be in God's presence. And we need to always be connected to the Holy Spirit because he's our teacher and leads us into all truth. And we love saying all truth, but when he says all truth, it means all truth according to what's going on in our lives. So the Holy Spirit should be able to come and say, don't wear that. Don't go for that job. Marry that person, buy that car, don't buy that property. He should be able to lead us into the truth of what is right for us. And then he says this part, which has been my answer, restore, sustain. he said, restore in me the joy of my salvation. So it's not just enough to have a heart that is open and sensitive to the spirit. You need to have a strong spirit man. You need to be able to be in the presence of the Lord, times of worship, reading your word, your devotions. And you need to be led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is not going to force his agenda on us. So even if the Holy Spirit is active in our lives, he can't partner with somebody that doesn't want to talk to him, doesn't want to listen to him, doesn't want to do what he's saying, even though everything he says is for our betterment. And then it says here, this is God dealing with our soul. Restore 
in me the joy of my salvation, like the first day. Can you refresh that in me over and over and over again so that my excitement, my joy, my zeal, my passion is refreshed continually? Restore it because it's depleted. And they said, and sustain in me a willing spirit. In other words, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I want willing to do it even when it's hard. Because the Bible lets us know in the New Testament that there's going to be a great falling away before he comes back. It's not talking about a falling away of people that are in darkness, a falling away in the church. It's written it's going to happen. I want my name to stay in the list of people that is not falling away no matter what happens to me. I refuse to let go of God because I am not going to live in rebellion for 50, 25 years and burn in hell forever. No, thank you. So we are saying I need my heart to be clean. I need a strong spirit man. I need to be able to access God's presence in worship. I need the Holy Spirit active in my life. I need the joy of my salvation to ever be restored and refreshed. And I need to always be willing to obey God. This here, this here can keep you. If this becomes your prayer life, if you don't know what else to pray for yourself, if you focus on these couple of verses, it will transform your walk with God. Because can I tell you that after all the sickness, although I love God, although I trusted God, although my spirit was strong, although I wanted to be with him and I was still willing, the joy bit was battered. Because it was one thing after another, after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. I'm healed. Oh, no, he's coming back. Oh, no, you're healed. Oh, no, he's coming back. Oh, there's something else. Oh, there's something else. Oh, there's something else. I was like, oh, and it began to weary my joy. You understand? And if it wasn't that, it was what was going on in our house. If it wasn't the, the roof leaking, it was the rats running around in our roofs. You don't know. Just kept. If it wasn't that, it was how they were treating TJ at school. Something, 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 something. And it was. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit, gave me this chapter. This is the key to being able to sustain your walk with me until Jesus comes back. You need to have your heart refreshed because sometimes you can carry offense and misunderstanding and mystery. God has to clean your heart. If we're not in the word, if we're not speaking in tongues, if we're not praying, then our spirit man is not getting strong. Do you know that we need to be strong for the hell that is being unleashed on this planet right now and the wave of deception hitting so many churches? That when I was you guys' ages, there were pastors and preachers we look up to that turned away from the faith. We have to have a strong spirit to withstand the current coming off of social media, TV, out of people's mouths, the music that we listen to, the clothes that we wear, the place. There is a strong current because the Bible says that the devil is the God of this world. He didn't say he owns it. He said he's the God of this world. So when we prefer things of the world over God, which, whose camp do we think we are indulging in? If our appetites and desires are more for the things of this world than the things of our God and Savior, then you have to take a strong look at yourself and say, what is going on in me? So we need to have a strong spirit. Then we need to be able to Operate in the presence of God. When you pray, when we worship, when you have devotion, is God present in the atmosphere? When you call his name, does he respond to you? When you begin to worship him, does he fill your room? Are you able to access the presence of God? Or do you have to sing, 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 tongues, tongues, tongues? How much effort does it take to get into the presence of God when his presence is everywhere? What is blocking you from being aware of the fact that God is with you and in you? Then we need the Holy Spirit to teach us. There are some things we think we know we don't know. And if we're not reading the word, then how do we know that what we know is right? So we need the Holy Spirit to be able to nudge us, lead us, direct us. 
We need the joy of our salvation. If you watch the news just for two nights in a row, that alone can knock your joy. It can weigh you down when you hear what's happening. And although at the moment it's happening over that side and over that side and in that country, we've become ignorant to the fact that it is coming here. It may not be a bomb in the church, but they will write laws to say, you can't have no church. A few years ago when the children were doing their nativity play, the head teacher was a Christian. She said, we're not supposed to talk about Jesus at the nativity play. And I thought, what a load of nonsense. She said, however... She was bold. She says, however, we know what this season's about. It is about the fact that Jesus died. It is about salvation. And she said it. So if these laws are in operation now, what do you think, what do you think they have already planned for five years' time? Ten years' time? Have you not even noticed how movies now, they don't even say, oh, God, help me. They say, oh, I pray to the universe. I pray to... They've even changed the narrative in their script because the God of this world has created systems of operation. It's a system in operation to indoctrinate us to think a certain way. I'm really excited to be living now though the Bible says there's a great cloud of witnesses watching us. We are their TV, their cinema, their radio, their adverts. We are. So allow them to get excited about what premiere is going to be breaking forth in your life. Can we? Come on, let's just stand and pray a little bit longer. Let's just pray a little bit longer. Let's just pray a little bit more earnestly. Let's just keep pressing in. 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 In the atmosphere of the corporate prayers, in the atmosphere of corporate worship, in the atmosphere of corporate worship, in the atmosphere of corporate praise, we're in an environment now where the atmosphere is so saturated, it becomes easier to get breakthroughs sometimes than in our own homes. So don't waste this time in the presence of God where you know that there is the strength of the Spirit. This place is saturated with the presence of God. This place is saturated saturated with the presence of God. So many prayers, so many prayers have gone up in this house. Surely there is a given moment when there's going to be a breakthrough. Surely, surely, surely there is a breakthrough in the atmosphere. There is a breakthrough in the atmosphere. We don't know what day, we don't know which minute, we don't know what Sunday, we don't know what moment, but we know the breakthrough is about to break forth from our prayer life into this natural life. And we keep speaking, we keep declaring until it happens. And we don't grow weary of doing good. It is good to pray. It is good to declare the word of the Lord. We keep on keeping on, keeping on, keeping on, keeping on. Come on, come on. Robosa. Some of us are building pathways in the desert where there's been no access, where there's been no way. Your prayers are clearing the path. Your prayers are laying the foundation for roads. Your prayers are opening up access points. Keep praying, keep pushing, keep building in the spirit, knowing that at any given moment there will be a manifestation. Lord, we connect with the prayers that have gone on in this building over the last hundred years because we know there was a prayer group that prayed and prayed until every one of them passed away in this building. And we know that they prayed for the future. We know that they prayed that this country will be saved. We know that they prayed that there will be protection from your presence. And Lord, we connect with the prayers of old that are saturating this environment. And we say, let there be protection over our families. Let there be protection over this town. Let there be protection over our workplaces. Let there be protection over our children. Let there be protection over their ears when they go to school. Let there be protection over our bodies. Lord, we thank you that there is a net of protection, Lord. We run in, the righteous run in. And they are saved because the name of the Lord is like a strong tower. That means it cannot be penetrated. There is no darts of the enemy. There's no plans of the wicked one that can destroy the tower of the Lord. Because it's strong and mighty. 
Robo sata. Rebe si robo sata. Sometimes you have to speak to your mind and say, shut up, man. You're not helping me. Shh. So every thought swimming around in your head is one to take and accept. Do we not know that the enemy is operating in the airways with suggestive thoughts and ideas? That's why the Bible says you need a helmet. Why would the word say you need a helmet if there aren't things that could get into your head? You've got to put your shield of faith in front of your heart. Because when things are hitting at us, we need our faith to push it back. Instead of being frustrated with God, God, why haven't you? Why haven't you? Begin to turn your attention to this and say, how dare you frustrate my prayers? How dare you block what I'm speaking? How dare you? How dare you? Shut your mouth in my life. Stop trying to touch my finances. Stop trying to mess with my relationships. Leave my children alone. Robo Sata. Begin to command that dirty, foul, stinking enemy. We're not afraid of him. We stand in the authority of Christ and we refuse to bow to any intimidation, any pushback that the devil gives. We refuse. Robo Santa Rabasa. We refuse. Rike and Robosa. Come on, come on. Robo Santa Raba. Rike and Robosa. Raba Baba Sutoro Robosa. We're not going to allow the devil to keep pushing us around and bullying us and telling us that we can't trust God. The devil is a liar. He keeps creating scenarios to try and prove that God is a liar. He is the lie. Rama Sata. There are some creatures that when they're dying, that's when they make the most noise. There are some creatures when they're dying, that's when they throw themselves around the place. There are some creatures when they're coming to the end of their days, that's when they become more violent. The devil knows his end is near. He's not becoming more powerful. He's not becoming greater. He's becoming more desperate. And we refuse to be intimidated by him. We refuse to be intimidated by him. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And that devil in this world is not greater than the God that is in us. We rebuke every spirit of intimidation. We rebuke every spirit of fear. We rebuke every spirit of complacency. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We are the bride of Christ. Do you know who your groomsman is? Do you know who your groom is? Have you read about him lately? He is a warrior and he is a lion. Shebo Sandarabosa. He's not scared. Rokotorabosa. He's not intimidated by what the enemy is doing on the earth. Rike Yandorabosa. Robosi Kandorabosa. Come on, everyone. Come on, everyone. Come on, everyone. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Come on. Become connected. Become focused. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you the weapon that the enemy has formed against you. Say, Holy Spirit, show me the devices that the enemy has been using to keep me in doubt, keep me in fear, to keep me questioning God. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to pull down what? There is something over some of our heads that needs pulling down. Affecting how we think. Affecting where we go. Affecting what we say. Affecting what we do. And we think, I just felt like doing it. Check what it's coming from. 
Robo sendere be surobosa. Roko toro robosa. I refuse to lose my salvation after all this time. If any of you want to lose your salvation for the things of this world, that's your choice. But I refuse. I'd rather lose. I'd rather lose everything else. If you count how many days a man would live on this earth compared to eternity, is it really worth it? Do we think we can avoid God? I said, do we think we can avoid God? We told him we give him our lives. Why do we keep taking it back? Come on, house of the Lord. Some of us need to quick start. We need to jump start. We need to jump start some people in here this morning. Some people need to be jump started in here because you're dry. Some of us need to be jump started because our batteries are low. Some of us need to be edified and built in the spirit. Come on. Reke yando robosa. Rebeso. Jacob said, I can't let you go until you bless me. Because there's something that I need that I haven't had yet. And if I let you go, this may be my only chance. So whatever you're going to do to me, God, I'm not letting you go. I need more God I am greedy I need more of you I want my shadow to heal people I want to lay hands on the sick and they recover I want to see my family say I need more of you God I want all my friends to be saved I want my friends in the house of God with me. I want the struggle between us to end. I want to not keep compromising because they're in darkness. I can't live in the gray area. It's black or it's white. It's light or it's dark. I give my life to you again, God. I give my soul to you again, God. I give my life to you again, God. I give my body to you again, God. I am the sanctuary and the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not my body. Sometimes church is boring. Church is not here to entertain you. Church is here to glorify God. Get your mind right. We're not here to entertain nobody. We're here to glorify God. You're not here to be entertained. You're not here to have, oh, I had a great time in church. You're here to know I met with the presence of God today. Change that thinking in your head. No one's here to entertain you. We're here to cry out to God. The first purpose of the church is to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if we can't even do that bit, how can we think about anything else? Worship him in spirit and in truth. That's number one. And then number two, we obey him. Whatever he wants, whatever the vision, whatever the plan, whatever the mandate, we obey him. That's it. Not here to give you a great time in church and, oh, I didn't really like that worship song. And, oh, church is so long. That's your flesh. Your flesh don't want to stay in church. But your spirit craves to have more of it, more. I need more. Just being in this atmosphere. And you know if you, if you admit it, the times when you think, I don't want to read the word. And the minute you read it, you think, ooh, this is good. You read it, it opens up thoughts in your mind. You think about things. It is only the devil and your flesh that wants you to not connect with God more. I don't care what excuse you give. Anything keeping you away from God is a distraction. (laughs) I said anything that is drawing you away from God is a distraction and that's not God. 
If you got a job, that's one thing. But did God tell you to take that job? Oh. Do you think just because the answer came, that's proof that God answered? You need to have discernment of spirits to know who gave you that gift. Where did it come from? What is the motive and the agenda of it? What's going to cost me in the end? Esau gave up his inheritance for natural needs. And then he lost the blessing as a consequence. We all look at Jacob and say, how could Jacob do that to him? The issue was Esau's heart that it was able to happen in the first place. There's some things we lose, not because the devil stole it, but because we didn't put no padlocks on it. We didn't lock that thing down. I want to read a scripture. Oh, what's Pastor Molly shouting for? She's always shouting. God tells me to deal with the spirits that are trying to attack this church and trying to attack us. That's it. If you don't like it, that's your business. But I don't want to stand before God and know that some of you are not standing on the same side entering into heaven because I never told you the truth. That's the agenda of the leadership in this house. We don't want none of you to be burning in hell. If you don't know that's what it is, there's something wrong with your thinking. We don't want you in hell. We don't want our family in hell. We don't want our friends in hell. We don't. That's forever. How can we not give up a few things now forever? For the sake of ever, for the sake of a recreated world. The Bible said he will recreate heaven and earth. So he's not saying we won't have lives. It will just be sin free. Our bodies will be sin free. The environment and atmosphere will be sin free. Why don't we want that more than the things in this planet now? What's wrong with us? We've got to start to measure what's going on in me. That I don't want to let go of a few things for the sake of 50, 60, 70 years. And if God is really coming back in the next 30 years, like most of the leading apostles are saying, we've only got about 30 years left. Why are we indulging in the things of the world? For the sake of 30 years, we could lose our souls. Don't you get that yet? We could end up burning in hell because we're indulging in things that are dying. Things that are not benefiting us. Some of us are dabbling in things that are not even supporting our agenda or dreams to become greater. It's just a waste of our money. Some of you lucky that lucky that Zoom's on today. Because I'd call you by name. You're wasting your time. You are wasting your time. You don't like what I said, come say, come talk to me. You're wasting your time. Because there's nothing that we're indulging in this earth that will sustain us, that will keep us, that will bless us, that will ensure we get into heaven. That's the end goal. That when I stand before him, he doesn't say, I don't know you. Next. But Lord, I worshipped you. I spoke in tongues. I prophesied. I healed. I don't care. I don't know you. Because your heart wasn't really with me. Because gifts, when he gives them, he doesn't take them back. That's what it means when the scripture says that gifts are without reproach. It means he'll give it to you. It means it can operate without him. So just because you speak in tongues and you accepted Jesus at the beginning, it doesn't mean you're still going to make it in. That's no guarantee. Let's read. Where does it say that, Pastor Marley? Hebrews chapter 6. I refuse to let some of you go. I refuse to allow any of you to be burning in hell without my heart knowing I did everything. I did everything. I tell you straight because we don't have time. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away. Hebrews 6. And then have fallen away. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance. Since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame.
those of us that know the Holy Spirit and we're turning our back on him, don't assume that he's going to come back and you can get him back. Have you read it? Everyone stand up for the reading of the word, please. Everybody stand up. 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 Let's read it again. Verse 5. Read it. Everyone read it. Verse 5. And have taste. Sorry, from verse 4. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of. How comes I can only hear a few voices? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6. It doesn't matter. We're all reading the version of the Bible that we prefer and find we can take it in. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 5, verse 4. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to the repentance since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put into open shame. <laughs> so let me let you into a secret. We all carry different aspects of the nature of God, like a rainbow. It's the one light, but the one light is split through the prism, and the prism breaks up the different colors inside the one light. We all come from the same source, but we have different expressions. If God has said that this is your house, it's because you need the expression of this house. And if you keep complaining and moaning about the expression of this house, you're going to do yourself a disservice. Because some of us need the word straight. We just need it. Our nature is just tell me straight. I just want you to stop the long talk and just get to what you're saying. And I can guarantee all of you have that nature in this house. All of you have that. Just tell me. I listen to you talking to each other. Just, you just, I've, I've heard somebody say, just tell me, man. So when God puts you in a house where you just get told, man, how can we then dishonor that? I don't want any of you to burn. It's not a fire that quenches. It's not a fire that dimmers down. It's not a fire that gives you a break. It's not a fire that you're only in nine till five, then you get to sleep and then wake up and go back in that fire. It's a continual torment because it was made for beings that needed to be continually bound in that fire. It's not made for mankind, but as mankind have partaked of what the enemy has formed on the earth, as we agree with him, as we live in the indulgence of sin, we now become those who can go into that fire. So we should be doing everything possible not to indulge of the very thing that has doomed Lucifer to that fire. So when we are receiving the word of God or we are being, we are being uh, 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 corrected, chastised, love to holdness, being told it as it is, if we have a response of, mm, I don't want that, there is something wrong. Because if there was a literal lake of fire at the front of this building, and three of us were blindfolded and walking towards it. I don't think you'd be like, Charlene, Howard, be careful. Get away from that. Stop. What are you doing? Take that blindfold off. Out of your, your love for that person, the strength of your tone, because you see how close they are to the fire. Some of you are too close to the fire. Some of you are warming yourself on the fire and you think it's the sunshine. It is not the sunshine. And it will cost you. And I know, Pastor Marlene, you're so old. No, you don't understand. I understand that there was fire when I was your age. So I'm talking to the young people now. And everybody else that is young. There was fire when I was your age. And I indulged in that fire. And I'm now 44. And the consequence of that fire still haunts me. So when we say to you guys, don't do that. Come back to the house of God. You need to pray. You need to be here. It's because the scars that we have that are maybe 5, 10, 20 years older than you that we know that once you get those scars, they can't be removed. There are scars I have on my body now. If it's cold, they hurt. If I twist wrong, they pull me back. 
even though the scars are from years ago, the consequence of those scars still try to control or limit me. That's just natural. Slip this in my back. Can I tell you the last time I wore heels? I don't know what heels are anymore. The consequence, even though I'm stronger, and the consequence is still here. God does not remove consequence. He forgives sin. He cleanses. But if I break an egg on the floor, it doesn't matter how many times I said to mom, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Somebody still has to clean that mess up. And there are times that even though you've wiped it away, I can still smell it. Did it get into the corners by the kickboard in the kitchen? You understand what I'm saying? Some of us, we know if we wear white, that's how I don't know how Andy wears white and you guys, and it stays clean. There are some white things I've worn once. Look here. I wear them once. That's the end of them. Because I don't know how to get it back to white. There are some things that we do that although we are cleansed, the residue. Stop playing. You want me to tell you explicitly when Zooms are on the things that I've done that haunt me and the way people view me because of what I did? Come talk to me and I'll tell you straight. Stop playing with the things of this earth. Stop playing with the things of this world because there is a price. And you may not feel it now, five, ten years time, but there may be a sound of a trumpet and you've got no oil. Because the thing you were indulging in kept holes in your bucket. And although you kept being topped up, it kept being leaked out. And you didn't even know. You think these governments are going to keep letting us do whatever we want to do in church? Do you know that I know people right now working for the government that told me, Marlene, I need to let you know that there are certain things that certain departments are doing that are working. I'm not going to say the department. They send people into churches to monitor what people are doing. Whether it be social services, whether it be Indian Revenue, whether it be the Charity Commission. You don't think there's an agenda behind it. You don't think there's a spirit behind it with an end goal. You didn't go through nursery, primary school, secondary school, college, university, if you did and so on, without an end goal in mind. Even though we might not have to learn our ABC now, the ABC helped you to form words then sentences, then statements, then essays, then dissertations. From starting from the alphabet. Don't think that the enemy is not in the long game. If it takes him 10 years to get Howard into hell, he'll take the 10 years. If it takes 30 years to get you, Lois, into hell, he'll take the 30 years. Whatever it will take for him to steal you from God, he will do it. Because he knows... If you reject God, if you reject the Holy Spirit, you're putting Jesus to shame. You are embarrassing him. And then it says, how can you come back? So we're going to have a time of repentance before worship. Was this my plan? No, because we're on a very short schedule. But this is what's needed. This is what's needed. Because I don't want none of you to burn. I don't want none of you ending in hell. I don't want it. I don't want our family members to end up in hell. I don't want it. And if I have to change how I live now to be a better example to them so that they will be able to come under the witness of the Holy Spirit, then so be it. Why can't we go through a little bit of limitation so that people can be saved? Why can't we pray more so that people can be saved? Why can't we change our lifestyle so that we lift up more of Christ so that we can help them choose? But if we look like them, why should they take the choices we've taken? If we behave like them, speak like them, dress like them, live like them, why do they need to be saved? But if someone doesn't show them that in the midst of darkness, you can still be an example of what is right, even when everything else is wrong. But someone's got to pay the price. You want to pay the price? I've been reminded daily, you've paid the price, Molly. Yes, I have. You want to pay the price? I'm not saying your price is the same as mine. We all know what the price is, if we're honest. We all know kind of where, in what area. We kind of feel where it is. Come on, let's lift our hands. Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. 
Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Don't take your presence from me, God. Don't take your presence from me. I want you to be able to be always around me because I'm living right. Don't take your presence from me, Lord. Give me a willing and steadfast spirit, Lord, that is willing to serve you over the things of this world, Lord. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Build my spirit, man, strong. And clean my heart. Clean my heart. Cause my spirit man to be steadfast and strong. Don't cast, in other words, don't just pull away from me. I need to have access to your presence always. Holy Spirit, I need you to lead me. God the Father of heaven on earth, please do not take, do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. I need to be taught. I need to be led. I need to be challenged about what's going on on the inside of me. I need it. Restore the joy of my salvation, Lord. How I felt when I first gave myself to you. When I was walking right. When it was fresh, like fresh water. When it was bubbling up and overflowing. When I wanted to pray. When I wanted to worship. When I wanted to seek you. When I wanted to serve you. When I wanted to love the things of God. When I loved the house of God. Because it's your house. When I craved. When I was desperate to enter into the courts of the Lord. Restore all of that back to me, God. And cause my spirit to always say yes to you, Lord. Always say yes. Always be willing. Always be available to you, Lord. Make us a prisoner of this gospel. So we can't get out. I don't want to get out of this. I don't want to get out of this covenant. I don't want to get out of this commitment. I don't want to get out of this life. I am yours. I told you I give my life to you. I'm sorry I keep taking it back and becoming a liar. I keep taking little bits back. Forgive me, Lord. Can the worship team come up, please? Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for bringing strange fruit into the house of God. For bringing strange fruit into the house of God. For bringing a strange smell. The Bible says that our prayers, our worship should be a sweet smelling aroma. Forgive me Lord if I'm bringing in a strange smell. The smell of flesh. The smell of sin. The smell of malice. The smell of unforgiveness. The smell of disobedience. The smell of selfishness. Forgive me, Lord, if any of those things are oozing out of me, out of my pores. Forgive me, Lord, if I'm holding resentment and bitterness in me, creating a strange smell to my worship. That's why I need you to create a clean heart in me so that my worship is not tainted by the things of this world. Keep me fresh, Lord. Like I've just been plucked from the tree. Fresh. Not tainted. Not defiled. But fresh. Not unclean or unholy. But fresh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That even as I stand in the house of God, that there is nothing in me that could render me dead. You know that within the last 10 years plus, there have been ministers that have fallen dead on the altar. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, why are you trying to? I am trying to scare you. Fear of the Lord. Worship team, can you hear me? There have been people, ministers, esteemed ministers, step up onto the altar, fall and have a stroke, fall and die. 
Because this place is an awesome and terrible place. If you could physically see where you stand as the worship team, you would know that this is where the coal and the fire is. If a prophet could say, forgive me Lord, I'm a man with unclean lips. That was a prophet. Was not aware that he had become tainted by his friendship with the king. This place, every time we enter onto this place, it should be knowing that we are clean, that we are right, that we are not doing things in private, that if it was put on the screen, we'd be ashamed of. Can you hear me? So this is the warning I'm feeling. If you know you are not right, put the mic down, put the drum down, put the whatever down and get it off. Because that's how seriously we need to take worship. Because this is one of the first ministries that take place in the house of God. The worship has to be right. Because the house of God is a house of worship. Our first primary assignment as human beings is to worship God in spirit and in truth. So the first place the enemy likes to attack is the worship team. 